build our adventure game. We laid it all out in pseudocode. So here's the adventure game basically all laid out. You can see it up in the timeline here. You read it, adventure, you're bored with your everyday life, so you book passions on a ship. Adventure seems to have found you as the ship caught fire during the night. Your survival depends on the choices you make. Choose wisely. So we begin by clicking the begin button. Now we have two options. So you read the screen, your ship is burning, you feel it beginning to slip into the ocean. You can either try to put out the fire or jump from the ship. Now remember, we've already laid this out. So if we say put out the fire, it says you pour water on the flames, they only grow, try again, and guess what? Your adventure begins all over again because why? Well, you lost. So let's begin again. Let's jump from the ship. And we go, we have two choices. We can go to the lifeboat. Oh, guess what? Try again because the lifeboat is full. Now we can jump ship swim to the debris. So as you can see all we're doing is we're giving the user options. So um, what I'm going to do is I'll put this flaw on the or this uh, Swift file so that you can play this game and you can see what happens when um, all this is is a game that gives people options. We can rest, you can build a fire explore. Remember the build the fire is the circular um, keep trying, you're unsuccessful, give up, there's no fire, no life, you lose, start over again. So now we go back through, we can say we want to rest, explore, and we can go hunting or we can build a shelter. So these, this is kind of that text-based game. Your job is going to be to construct the same game. Okay, so you're going to have to go in and actually go in and construct the same game. But let's look at this one. Let's analyze this one because this one's pretty easy. If we come to the screen here, what we've done is we've set up our screen. Our background is this yellow and we have a button. This is only one button. If I open the library, you'll see that we have one button in here. And what the button does is, let's go ahead and open my button. We have an upstate and an overstate, and the overstate changes to yellow. So that's our button. There's only two states, and there's only one button for this whole scene. What happens is we put the button in each keyframe where the text changes, and we put the buttons. The buttons themselves have a name. Okay, so this button right here, if I was to click click off and then click the button right here you can see button start btn start is the instance name the name of the button is my button and there's my button right here in the library what we've done is put text on top of that button as well so all we've done is we've gone in and dropped some static text in this frame right here we go to the next one we go to the start frame and we put in two buttons and this button here, let's click off, this button here is called button put out fire. This one is button jump. These are important because when we go, we're going to write a program, the same program for each one. Notice this little flag right here also. This frame right here has a frame, this, the frame has a tag and it's called title. We're going to use each one of these little flags, these title flags. Notice this one says start. This one says sync. Because when we go into the button, all right, I'm going to click the button, or let's just click the frame, because we're going to put, we're not going to put the action on the frame. We're going to put it actually the action. I mean, we're not going to put the action on the button. We're actually going to put the uh, action on the frame itself. So as, as you can see what we've done is we've commented this saying basic textile adventure game. We put a stop action so that when the game starts it doesn't run through all of these and then stop at the end. We have it stop right here. We put a stop action. And then this code is the same code that we're going to use. I'm going to copy this. Is going to be the same code that we're going to use on all of these buttons except see where it says the code the variable name or the instance name right here that's going to change and this one here where it says sync so I'm going to come back here and notice it says button start so let's go back and I'm going to click off and I'm just going to click this and notice that that's button start right there alright so I'm going to click back in that frame 
go back to the action and it says button start period on release equals function I want something to happen when they click on that button when they release that button we're gonna to go to the root timeline and this is it this is the root timeline right here okay that's the root go to and stop and then we tell it here's the function at the root level go to and stop and inside the function here we we tell it to go to the flag start and that's the flag right there remember that we're gonna name each one of these keyframes so this one start sync jump okay so when they press on that button so remember that this is the frame here we're calling the instance button start so as soon as they press button start when they release it we want them to execute a function and that is root at the root level we go to and stop at the start frame okay so they go as soon as they let go of it it's going to go to and stop the start frame and that's this one so if I click on this frame so let's go back now we've told it to go to here so it goes to there and I've put this text here so now I'm giving the user some options okay we're giving it some interactivity we're giving it a choice so now I have my start frame so I've told it remember I told the button here to go to and stop right there at the start frame which is this one right down here at the frame label so now I give it some options and I've got the put uh, button put out fire and I've got a button jump now notice when I put button I put BTN and I'm just pulling an instance of the button and I'm gonna show you the programming here I'm gonna we're gonna make a whole brand new one and I'll show you how that works button capital J U M P I want you to try and remember to keep your naming convention the same I've on button put out fire I have button lowercase button capital P capital O and capital F for the instance name and remember we're only using this one button so let's start all over again so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say file new and I'll give you an example of how we're gonna do this okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna actually come in here and I'm gonna insert a blank keyframe at 10 and let's go to 20 I'm gonna insert a blank keyframe and at 30 we'll just we'll just put a couple in here all right um, we can change the background color if we want but in this case what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna pick a, let's see if we can get something that kinda looks like parchment and I'm gonna put a box here and let's see I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna kinda try and make this look like it's parchment okay oh you know what let's do this I'm gonna cut this out here cut and paste it right here in the first frame so I'm gonna come over here click off and I'm just gonna kinda pull this in because I want it to look a little bit maybe like rolled parchment and I'm just gonna come over here and I'm gonna put a little circle let's roll that out see if we can get a little circley look to it we're gonna disconnect that and I'm gonna run into a problem because what I want to do is actually let's do this I'm going to send it back yeah you know we can kind of get a little paper kind of look right there if we want anyway so I'm gonna click this control C control V and I'm just gonna kind of see about let's flip that I don't want to flip it vertically. Oops. Let's move it back out of there. All right, and I'm going to try and dump that back in there like that. Send it to back. 
So we kind of, you know, you can you can probably do a better job, but I'm just trying to throw something together real quick right here. So if you want, you can uh, put this together a little better than that. Anyway. Okay, so now I'm going to put some text down. Um, and I can group this if I want. Uh, it's pretty much going to be up to me. Let's do this. I'm going to copy both of these. Control-C, Control-V. I'm going to take them out because that's my... Oh, no. Oops. I'm going to hit Control-C, Edit, Paste in Place. Now I'm going to flip these while they're still selected. Um, let's see. So now I'm just going to drag them to here. See if I can kind of get them. And I'm going to send that to the back. So kind of, sort of, maybe looks like it's parchment. But anyway, so. Um, I can make this a movie clip if I want. Um, all I'm going to do is when I get to here, I'm going to insert a keyframe. Whoops, let's do this. Let's delete. Oh. I'm going to clear the keyframe there. Let's clear that one. And all I'm going to do, excellent, all I'm going to do in here is insert a keyframe. And I can do the same thing here. I'll go ahead and clear that keyframe, and then I'll come in here, insert keyframe. So now I have this in the back the whole time. I'm going to clear that one as well. And I'm just going to go in there and insert keyframe. OK, now I want to make a button. So I'm going to come in here. I'm just going to come off to the side and make a button. Let's click off, click back in. I want to change that color, actually. We'll make it blue. Okay. Now remember, when you make something blue like this, your text has to work accordingly. So we can kind of play with the same button as they had, or we can make something a little different. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller, because it doesn't need to be that big. I'm going to hold the uh, Shift key down so that it goes accordingly. Then I'm going to modify, convert to symbol, and I'm just going to call this um, my button. Because it doesn't really matter what the name is, but it does matter that it's a button. We hit OK. So now we have the my button in here. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and dump that because I don't need it. I'm going to go in here into my button. I'm going to insert a keyframe. And all I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to change that color so that what we see in that color now, let me click off and click back inside. What we see in that color is a change so that when they scroll over it, they can see that the button is changing. Okay. So we're back here. I'm going to grab this. Um, here's where we make our text. We're just going to say, um, your. Your excellent adventure. Okay, and then we can say um, pretty much the same thing. Your spaceship is burning. You've decided to jettison. And you have a choice to make. Okay, do you, and we can have, we can say dot, dot, dot. So here's our little lettering here. And by the way, I don't want it to be this blue, so whoops. Let's go back and change this. I also, I can have it center aligned, but I want to make it just a bit bigger. Your excellent adventure. Okay, I'm going to have to go in here and do some stuff, though. Your... Spaceship is burning and you have a choice to make. Do you? All right. I'm going to click off. Let's click this over. Also, you should know if you're going to be using a special font in here, break this apart so that um, 
it becomes a graphic and not okay not part of your um, font in case somebody decides they don't want to use that what if I use um, let's see this font okay somebody's not gonna have battle lines and so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to say eh, you know what I need that to be uh, broken apart let's go ahead and make it black so I'm gonna select this when I do this though remember that um, it's going to trans. It may. It, we don't have to worry about it as because I've already put in these. This keyframe here doesn't have any text on it. This keyframe doesn't have any, and this keyframe doesn't have any. Um, I entered the keyframes before I put any text down, so I'm safe. I'm going to go ahead and select the text again. Go to modify. I want to break it apart. Here we go. Break it apart and then break it apart again. So now it becomes part of the symbol. Uh, the only problem is I want to make sure that we arrange this and let's do this. Let's select all of this because what's happened now is it's gone to behind this. So let's arrange, send to back. Yeah, let's move this and see what happened to our font. Okay, there it is. Let's select that, modify. Oh, you know what? Let's go ahead and I can convert this to a symbol just because I don't want to screw with it. Um, if I do this though, I don't have to, and this is one of the reasons why in the other uh, in our adventure here, this text um, was all one. Um, I'm just going to call this text one. It was still a whatever text we wanted it to be. The problem with that is this. Um, if they, again, like I said before, if they don't have the uh, font in their computer, then you're going to run into some problems, okay? Unless you use just a real basic font. And you can do that. That's not a problem. I'm just showing you um, one alternative. So there's that. And again, if you're going to do this, remember that you're going to have to remember text one, text two, text three, all of those things. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this button down here. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to grab two instances of this button. And in this case, um, we have to decide what we want this to do. Remember, we talked about how to um, set up our buttons. Um, when we we only need one button but we're gonna put static text on top of this button I'm gonna make this white right now and we're gonna put this one right here we're gonna say uh, jettison so we're gonna either jettison the ship okay or we're going to let's just say we will um, we've got jettison the ship or we can put out fire so we're close to what we were talking about before now if I don't explode these what remember that what's going to happen is um, unless they have or unless I nest the font and we'll talk about doing that another time I might have to turn this into some more text so that's one of the reasons why you should probably stay as close to using a regular text format as possible okay so here's button we're gonna call this BTN jettison okay and on this one we're just gonna call this fire so in the instance name we're gonna call this BTN fire capital F for the fire now here in this one this is we we haven't put any uh, stops we haven't put any anything happening here yet um, the other thing that we might want to think about is um, we didn't put a start button in our other adventure here we put a start and that's how we started our adventure so we're here and it says begin um, we can get rid of the begin if we want but it's pretty much up to us if we go right into this what we're doing is when we start here notice we have put out fire or jump okay which means we go to the next one and you tried to put put out the fire and it sinks and this is the jump one so you just want to make these flags um, logical so all I'm going to do in this one is I'm going to say this is my jettison flag, the frame label. I'm going to say jettison. And this one's going to be fire. Oops, let's go back. Sorry, 
I'm going to click on that again, and I'm just going to call this fire. Okay. Um, in this frame right here, <coughs> I'm going to put a stop action. So I'm just going to come in here, and what I'm going to do is this. Okay, and then I'm so now all I'm going to do is go in and put stop, terminate the line, and I'll say. And remember, these these notes are just for you. Notice they go to gray because I have the comment box set up already. So the next frame we will begin the game. Okay. So now, though, I need to make some choices because what I have to do now is I have to say this button we have to put the actions on. So let's go ahead and pick the jettison button and we'll put the actions on that on, in this frame or for this button right here. So remember, we're not putting it on the button itself. We're putting it in the action. So remember that this is the button jettison that we're going to put the actions for. So I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to say button jettison. Okay, we have to make sure, by the way, that we spelled it correctly. Oh, jettison. So now we need to go back and change that. Jettison dot. And now we're going to say on release. When it releases, we want it to do, we want it to, I, put a function, do create or do this function. We're going to start our opening bracket and we're going to say at the root level, okay, and that's underscore, at the root layer, go to and, now look, you'll notice that as soon as I start to type in go to and, I want it to go to and stop and I hit enter and I want it to stop at which frame? jettison flag, the jettison right here. And remember, this is a lowercase. So if it's going to be a lowercase, you have to remember that. Okay, we're going to terminate the line, and then I'm going to close my curly bracket. So I have an opening bracket. Here I am, button jettison on release equals function. <clears throat> and then we're going to say, here's the function we want you to do. At the root level, we want you to go to and stop at the jettison frame. All right and then we close this. The next frame are basically we're going to say um, we can put notes here saying that we're going to continue on to the next frame. So we can check to see if this is going to work for us. Ah, We stop at our first thing. Here's our button. Notice it turns it into a button. We click on it and it takes it to the jettison which of course we have nothing there but we know that that works now. So let's go ahead hit control enter, test your movie, hit jettison and it takes you to the jettison label layer. Okay, and I'm going to show you, we're going to make sure that it's at the jettison layer right here. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say you have jettisoned from your space ship and see another and see, let's see, use and see two planets. A red one and a blue one. One. Which one do you choose? All right, so we can already start to see we're going to have a dilemma here. So I'm going to grab that right there. Bring this right there. So now we're starting to give them options. As you can see, they're going to start to choose their own adventure. Here I'm going to drag down my button. And we're going to call this button instance button red. And we'll grab this button and call it button blue. So go to your instance name. Okay, which might be a little confusing since one is not red and one is not blue. All right, right here I'm going to come in here at 40 and I'm going to insert keyframe. I'm going to go to insert red, insert keyframe here because I don't have any text. Guess what? This one's going to be, my flag is going to be red. 
and this one's going to be blue. So as you can see, we are starting to build our game for the user to follow. Now, what transpires on all of those is completely up to you. Okay, so let's go back and test this. I go to fire. You've jettisoned. Ah, guess what? You have jettisoned from your space, <clears throat> from your spaceship and see two planets, a red and a blue. Which one do you choose? Well, we don't have anything to choose yet because we can't click on either one of these because we haven't put in the button code. So let's go back to the uh, jettison. So we can say in this one, we can come in here and put this text and we'll say this is remember our red button and let's make it white so it's easier to see we're going to drop this down okay so remember the only thing we're worried about is that button red and button blue and we're going to come back to this one we're going to do the same thing we're going to type in blue Remember, it's a good thing to know which instances you're uh, dealing with when you're putting these buttons together because you don't want the red one to be on the blue button and vice versa. So there's red and blue. All right. So now um, I can go ahead and copy this code that's already here in this. So I'm just going to hit grab that. And I'm going to go to the, let's see. I'm here. I want to go to the jettison and I'm going to type this in and I'm going to just go ahead and we can put more comments in there if we want but right now I'm just going to, oops, I'm going to hit control V on. Okay, so button. This is button red on release function go to and we want it to go to what? Well, we want it to go to the red flag okay and then we're gonna put another one in here and we're gonna say control V and we're gonna take out jettison and we're gonna call this what button blue and on release we want it to go to the blue frame okay and remember we want it to be named uh, lowercase blue this is one of those instances where remember you want to keep your naming conventions all the same so if I have a capital B here maybe I should make a capital B on my flag so what do we have now let's see so let's start the game all over again. So I have jettison. Oh, guess what? You have jettison from your spaceship. You see a red world and a blue world. And it's not giving me that option because I've got to go back and make sure that I name those instances. So here's the instance. So guess what? I need to come in here. Oh, I don't need my drawing object. Oh, you know what happened? I broke them all apart when I hit the control B for breakaway. Ah, crud. So you know what? I'm going to take this out. No, this is what I'm going to do. Let's go back out. All I have to do now is I'm going to dump that and dump that because those aren't going to help me at all. So I'm going to delete those. Yeah, you got to be careful because I hit control B and not control V and guess what it did. So there's that. Let's do this. Um, let's move this back one. Let's see if that'll work send backwards uh, and not only that but my text went back too oh darn so let's do this let's grab all this text oops nope 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 I'm gonna grab that that gosh darn it yep so let's do this I'm gonna grab all this I need to just grab, gosh, see you just hate to screw up like that. So oh, here we'll, we'll just go in. So now what's happened is I got to send this all the way back, but I'm just going to delete that and that one. Let's go back. And I'm just going to put a new, there's the D right there. I'm just going to put a new name in. I'm going to grab this, drop it right there. I'm going to get rid of this one. We're going to put the names back in. 
So it's good to see when we make these kinds of mistakes how they can really affect us. And then we get in here and we're like, what the heck happened here? So we're going to call this red. All right, and then we're going to bring this to blue. Because remember, we already have the programming already set up. All we have to do now is put the buttons with the right names in there. All right, so let's do this. We'll get that centered. Okay. Um, by the way, I got to go back and name this as button red, and we'll name this as button blue. And remember that I've already put my text in here. Oops. What happened? To, oh, yeah. Let's just select the one frame. We don't have to select the whole frame set. And here's my on red button. Red on release function. Go to red and stop. Um, when you press the blue button on release, go to and hit the blue button. So let's test it again. And if everything works out, we hit jettison. It goes to red. There's our red. We know we don't have red. But oops. And we know if we put out the fire, we can't go to fire because we don't have a fire yet and we haven't programmed that, but we can program that. But here's jettison. Here's the red is selected. If we do it again. So this is, you know, where you've got to get everything set up so that you can have some options. Okay. One more thing. I'm going to come back here. And on the put out fire, um, one of the things that we can do is we can put a lose state <clears throat> that we'll call each time. So I'm going to hit keyframe, insert keyframe. I'm going to go insert keyframe. And probably what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and uh, put it at the end. Uh, let's say somewhere, let's say one. 130. I'm going to insert a keyframe there. And this will be my lose keyframe. Okay, I'm going to label this lose. And in here, all I'm going to do is say, sorry, you lose. Um, sorry, your decision was flawed and you lost. Okay, and this is, remember, we talked about in the tutorial, we have a win screen and a lose screen. Sorry, your decision was flawed and you lost. Would you like to play again? And if they say yes, okay, we give them the option to go back and play again. And, of course, what are we going to do? We're going to put a button here. And, um, and in this case, let's give this the button label start because then that gives us the ability when we're down here in the lose frame to just pull a button here and we'll call this button start. Okay. And we'll have to tell them. So we'll say start again. And what kind of text do we need to put in here? Well, remember, um, what we'll do is, whoops, let's just make sure that we are not programming that. We just want to program that action there in the frame. We'll say, whoops, start over again or quit. And right now we won't talk about how to uh, write a quit button. It's pretty easy, you know, exit, quit. Or they can just actually uh, X out of your little screen. So in this case, remember, we're going to say uh, button, and this is start on release, go to start. All right. So we've labeled this the lose button. We've labeled the start again. Sorry, your decision was flawed and you lost. Would you like to play again? They say start again. They start again, otherwise they quit. Um, on the fire one, let's see what happens. So this one, we're going to put a little bit of text in here. We're going to say, your decision. Oh, actually, we don't even have to do that if we wanted to. We could just say that, uh, let's do this. Um, we can rename this fire one something else because when we get to the jettison, the start right here, where it says put out fire, well, golly, we don't even have to do that now because if we come back here, we now have a lose button that says we want to go ahead and 
name this button. Um, I'm going to go take and put that one back there. I'm going to come here to this, paste that text. Gosh darn it, I did again. See, I did it again. Okay, good. I have to undo that because I hit Control B again. All right, so here we're going to go back, put the action in the frame again. We're going to come here. We're going to hit that, and it says button fire on release. Go to lose. All right. So as we've made our game, we can see that I'm not going to need this fire frame, so I can use this fire frame for something else. I can take it out. I can, you know, eliminate it since I don't need it. Um, I can clear those keyframes and actually just delete them. I'm actually going to just get rid of those frames. So now I got the jettison. So here we are at start. They have a choice. They can jettison, which would take them to the jettison frame, or the put out fire frame, which takes them all the way down here to lose. Sorry, your decision was flawed and you lost. Would you like to play again? Okay, if you really wanted to have one that says, you know, your choice to put out the fire was wrong, then you could leave the fire uh, frame in there and they could, you could put a start uh, caption all over again uh, or a start button program in there. So here it is. Jettison, do you want red or blue? Since we don't have those programmed, we'll try again. But as you can see, if we put out the fire, sorry, your decision was flawed and you lost, would you like to play again? We say start again jettison. Now you have two choices, red or blue. And so based on these choices, they can continue with the game. So what I want you to do now is I want you to build an adventure game. It's all text-based and button-based. So your job now is to put together the pseudocode for your game based on the last tutorial we just had for the pseudocoding tutorial. So go back and rewatch that tutorial if you don't have it. And then I want you to build a game. Um, don't you don't no graphics I don't want you to put any doors graphics skulls images crossbones um, uh, X marks the spot pirate ship spacecraft uh, jungles I want you to use your text to make the user visualize their options if you want to set it in a jungle use your words to describe it. If you want to set it on a spaceship, use your words to describe it. If you want to put it on a, a pirate ship, use your words and use the buttons. Okay, so I want you to understand how the decision process comes about and how you can construct a game that keeps the user engaged. Let's say your game should at least be 150 frames long which gives you if you put a decision or if you put a frame every 10 that gives you some ability to put some real uh, options in there okay when you're done I want you to send me the Swift file the game file so that we can play the game because what I'm going to do is upload your game so everybody can play it in the class so you're going to need to send me also your pseudocode that you built that you used to build the game that you used to think out the process so you can build the pseudocode on paper, scan it and send it to me, as long as I can see your text, your writing, and your thought process. You can build it in Word using the drawing editor. You can use it, you can build it uh, like I did using um, the program I showed you in pseudocode. You can use Visio. You can use any program that allows you to put down a logic, uh, those kinds of paths. Well, I hope you've enjoyed learning this. Um, by the way, save this as your last name underscore adventure. Okay, so your last name underscore adventure. Put them in this week's folder with your pseudocode, your, um, your impressions of the net hack game that you should have played, and also the Swift file for this. So what's due today is a document detailing the questions. You had to answer the questions for the net hack. You have your pseudocode for your adventure game and then you have to build your adventure game and send me the Swift file for your adventure game. So if you have any questions, email me, give me a call, or come by and see me during my office hours. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this first tutorial in gaming and if you have any questions, give me a call.